Tyrion Lannister, one of the biggest people in Game of Thrones. He drinks a lot of mead, wine, anything really. Let's make a mead inspired by him. Let's get started. Hey, this is Man Made Mead. Today we're making a mead that Tyrion Lannister would be proud of. This is a piment, which is essentially a mash between a wine and a mead because you have a grape juice base and you also have honey as a uh, fermentable sugar. So uh, this is gonna be a very interesting and really fun kind of mead. Um, I am gonna tell you the recipe is right there. We're using about 128 ounces of grape juice in total. We're also gonna use two pounds of clover honey and in the secondary, we're gonna add a little more honey, probably about five or six ounces. We're also gonna add a little buckwheat honey, which is what I have here. You don't have to add this, but that will add some uh, interesting flavors and a little more grape juice that totaled into that other one. We're gonna use the Lauvin EC1118, which is a champagne yeast, really, really good for fermenting, and uh, it's gonna be awesome. So let's go ahead and mix our ingredients together. That's the first step. Uh, I will say this, this mead is gonna be done probably in five to six weeks. Traditionally, these are not done that early, but because this is Tyrion Lannister we're talking about, and if you know anything about the show, uh, I don't think he really cares about how long something's been aged all the time. He just wants a good drink. So, let's get mixing. First, two things. I always sanitize everything I use. This bucket is full of star sand water, which is a sanitizer. Everything's sanitized. Everything I've used, I used today has been sanitized. We're now gonna also rehydrate our yeast. It's gonna wake them up, help them get ready for battle. Um, so let me go ahead and mix in. I'm gonna use one ounce, or excuse me, two ounces of EC1118. All right, we have our mead so far right here, our pie mint as we're calling it, of course. Now, um, the next thing we need to do is I'm actually gonna take and pitch in my yeast, which this has been rehydrating for the last few minutes. It is completely ready to be introduced because they're awake enough. So I'm gonna do that. And then we're gonna take a gravity reading. What is a gravity reading? It's where you take a hydrometer, something like this, which is a plastic tube. You float it in the liquid. It floats to a certain point, which then tells you how alcoholic or possibly alcoholic your brew is gonna be. Let me show you how alcoholic this is gonna be. This is a hydrometer reading. You see here, it's floating. You can't quite see through the bubbles. It's a little bit easier for me to see. This thing is floating at 1.120. Once we have your starting gravity, you can take and find out how alcoholic your brew is gonna be. You can use this equation right here, assuming that you end at 1.000, or you can go to this website and you can plug in the uh, starting gravity a final gravity and find out from there. We're looking at roughly about a 15.7-ish percent um, mead, which is super high, uh, <laughs> super high ABV. But again, Tyrion Lannister, I think that's exactly what he wanted, what he would want. So now I'm gonna take my, um, this is my airlock and I have filled it with my star sand water. And we're gonna go ahead and place it on top of here. I'm gonna write down some information on the side of this, things like what it is, when did I start it, what's the original gravity, and I'm gonna put it away. It's gonna go through the primary fermentation, which means it bubbles a bunch essentially, and chew, the yeast will chew through the sugars here. So let's see what happens after the primary and see what it tastes like. All right, it's been a month um, since a month and actually three days since I started fermentation on Tyrion's Piment. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you the gravity reading because I believe it has stopped. I've stopped seeing any activity. Um, I see it's like slight degassing, but um, I, stuff I don't believe is fermentation. And I know that it's kind of stopped because it has not stopped at 1.000. We started at original gravity 1.120. We are currently setting at a pretty sweet mead. This is sitting at 1.030. Now, uh, I'm a little bit surprised because I thought that our yeast would chew through all the sugars. However, they haven't. And um, I think that that is okay. We've hit that, what's that percentage there? 12%. Um, 
I, I believe there's probably some sugars within the grape juice that might not be as fermentable, possibly. I'm not necessarily sure why it stopped so early, but not the end of the world. If this was Game of Thrones, he would, Tyrion Lannister would just drink it. So let's, uh, let's taste test it and see what we think. Ooh, yeah, it's definitely got a lot of sweetness to it. Not a lot, I mean, a fair amount of sweetness. It's not too, too sweet. Not so in my, sweet in my face that I like, I can't stand it. Yeah, it's got some heat from the alcohol. It's still pretty smooth, definitely very grape juicy, very grape-esque. It's pretty, um, pretty clear. It does have a really nice full body and you can definitely get that from the alcohol presence, but also the um, little tannic value he gets uh, from some grape juice. I mean, yes, it's sweet, but again, I think that at this point, Game of Thrones, they didn't have hydrometers, so they wouldn't have known when it's done fermenting. Could this have fermented all the way through to 1.000? Yes, it didn't though. So um, I, I remember talking about my recipe saying I'll probably back sweeten with some buckwheat honey. Probably not gonna back sweeten with some buckwheat honey simply because it is so sweet right now. Now, could I and just have an extra sweet mead? Yes, but I'm not going to. Let me rack this into a new container. By the way, I did see that this is finished fermenting because about a week ago I took a gravity reading and it was the same, 1.030. So a week with no fermentation, I think this thing is done. All right, so again, this thing's sweet, not the end of the world. Not gonna add any buckwheat honey because it, it's too sweet already. Can you do this with your recipe if you make it? Of course. Should the yeast have eaten through all the sugars? Possibly, but yeasts are temperamental. If they don't like what they're doing, then they'll stop when they want. So you kind of have to do, you kind of have to feed them well. I thought I feed, fed them well. I did add some um, Fermate O, some yeast nutrient to it to try and get it to keep going. Nothing. So that's that. I'm gonna go ahead and let this set for another two weeks and then, um, you know, we're just gonna enjoy a good glass of it in about two weeks and see how it is. So here's that time. It has been three weeks since we last uh, did anything with this mead and I have a sample of it here. This is of course Sartarian, Tyrion's um, Piment. So let's go ahead and try it three weeks later. Very sweet. Ooh, the, the elusiveness of this is the, uh, the grape juice sweetness hiding the alcohol content. Holy cow, this thing could get you going real fast because we're still sitting, I mean, at like 11 and a half to 12% mead. Full bodied, definitely very sweet, which can mm, heal some wounds, so to speak, with um, a mead. This thing's really good and I am a firm believer that Tyrion Lannister would just be gobbling this thing down. Um, I, I know it's gonna get even better with age. Yes, it's sweet. Um, is that a bad thing? No, I mean, sweet meads are a thing. And it's it's definitely, my threshold of sweetness is here. It's like right above that. So drinking a ton of it might be kind of tough, but as it ages, I do believe the honey character that we get, which does pop through the grape juice, that warmth does contrast against the, um, tartness of grape juice sometimes. There is sweetness, there's tartness in this thing. There's a full bodied coating your mouth with the sweetness, of course. And uh, I get a floral side. I believe that all of those things are gonna kind of uh, meld together better over time. So I definitely plan on taste testing this six months down the road. Yeah, I mean, holy cow. So here's my plan. I am going to, not on camera, I'm gonna show you just right now, um, my finished product after I bottle it. You'll see this is with, this is the label I put on right here. And uh, I, I normally try to label my stuff because it helps me keep my life more organized because I have a lot of stuff above me. And um, I'll store this thing back for another, who knows, six months, year, we'll taste test it in the future. But as a mead, with a, a mead that is now we're looking at nine weeks old, I believe. It's pretty good. The recipe said, I think six weeks. So we let it age for a little while longer. Again, this is Tyrion Lannister we're talking about. The dude just drinks whatever he wants. Uh, doesn't really matter the age. It's about um, getting that booze in your body. So that's what we've accomplished that today for sure. 
Will I make another piment? Absolutely. My goal next piment is for it to actually ferment through. When you make this recipe, uh, and you should, there's a good chance yours will actually ferment through everything. The Lauvin EC1118 should have fermented through all 18%. I did hit it with some um, nutrients, so I think that there could have been some non-fermentable sugars within the grape juice that could have kept it from fermenting out completely. It could have hit a roadblock, the yeast could have stopped, um, but I'm not getting a stressed yeast taste. I'm honestly not sure. If you have a hypothesis, leave it down below. If you want to make an easy mead, go check out that recipe. It's down in the, de the description. But this has been Tyrion Lannister's Piment, and um, I've enjoyed it quite a bit. I've made a bunch of other Game of Thrones meads. You can go check them out on the channel, of course. And uh, I will continue to make them as I find more recipes. So check out this recipe. Hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And I will see you guys in a future video. So thanks for your time. Cheers.